Okay, we're continuing our discussion on writing and graphing functions. Today we're talking about independent variables, dependent variables, and function notation. So, an independent variable is just the input variable most often we'll see in our class X, okay? And the dependent variable is the output variable, often Y, because it depends on X. Remember when we built tables? We'd pick a value for X and solve for Y. Y depended on that value of X we chose. Function notation. If the independent variable is X and the dependent variable is Y, then we can write Y as F of X or G of X or H of X. You can see we say F of X, but that's actually F uh, parentheses around the X, F of X, G of X, or H of X. Okay? Just a form of writing it. Notation is all that that is, so don't freak out about it. Okay, let's see how this independent variable, dependent variable, and function notation works. So let's say you have a math tutor, and that math tutor charges $50 per hour. Well, the hour is the independent variable, okay? So the number of hours that that tutor helps you determines the total cost, which is the dependent variable, okay? Because the total cost depends on those number of hours that the tutor helps you. So we would say if X is the number of hours, then H of X is equal to 50X, or the dependent, var dependent variable is 50X. It depends on how many hours you work, okay? So, a fitness center charges $100 initiation fee plus $40 per month. In this case, the independent variable is the month. The number of months that you're a member of the club determines the total cost. The total cost is the dependent variable because it depends on the number of months. And we could write that in function notation, f of x, x being the number of months, is equal to 100 plus 40x. 100 is that initiation fee, a constant, and 40 is the cost per month for that membership, and of course, X is the number of months you have that membership. Okay, let's evaluate some function notation term. Some, let's say, e uh, expressions in function notation. So, if we say F of X is equal to 3X plus 2, Okay, so don't get all freaked out again. F of X is just another way of writing Y. Okay, so if we say F of X is equal to 3X plus 2, and we want to evaluate it for two different cases, when X is 7 and X is 4. So we say F of 7, we're evaluating this function, 3X plus 2, when X is 7. So F of 7 is equal to 3 times what's X? 7 plus 2. 21 plus 2 is 23. So it's just another way of writing it. If you're totally freaking out now, let me help you. If, I would, if we would have had y equals 3x plus 2, and I told you to build a table of values, well, when x is 7, what do you do? So let me put that in the right place there. x and y. When x is 7, we substitute 7 for x, and we get y is 23. So y is a function of x. f of x, we could also say that's f of x. Okay? So this is something you already know. We're just learning a new way to write it. Okay? So when x is 4, we say f of 4, okay, is equal to 3 times 4 plus 2. Again, x is 4, we substitute that for x in the equation. In fact, the function notation is telling us what we're substituting, isn't it? Okay, so f of 4 is equal to 3 times 4 plus 2, 12 plus 2, f of 4 is 14. Again, this is just notation. Okay, g of t, function notation, g of t. We say that that's equal to 1.5t minus 5. We want to evaluate it again for two conditions t is 6 and t is negative 2. So when t is 6, we say g of 6, that's when t is 6, 
is equal to 1 and a half times 6 minus 5. 1 and a half times 6 is 9, minus 5 is 4, so g of 6 is 4. If t is negative 2, we're now going to evaluate the function when t is negative 2. So we say g of negative 2 is equal to 1 and a half times negative 2 minus 5. 1 and a half times negative 2 is negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Okay? So hopefully you're settling down and realizing this is just another way to write something that we've already done before. Right? Okay, so now I'm going to blow your socks off. <laughs> Got to do that. So now let's say that we have g of x is 2x and h of x is x plus 3. I want you to evaluate g of h of x when x is 7. Okay, wow. So basically we're doing a function of a function. Okay, g of h of x. And we're going to start the most inner function here. And we're going to first evaluate h of x. What's x? x is 7. So h of 7 is 7 plus 3 because h of x is x plus 3. 7 plus 3 is 10. So we know h of x is 10. So g of h of x is going to be g of h of 7, which is what we just did, which is actually 10, g of 10. g of h of x is actually g of 10 because h of x when x is 7 is 10. And g of 10 would be 2 times x or 2 times 10 and that's 20. So g of h of x when x is 7 is actually 20. We have to have both the functions, h of x and g of x, in order to evaluate g of h of x. Think about that one for a while.